Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about using input tags in HTML. Now, input tags are basically going to allow you to add elements on your page where users can input information. So these are things like text boxes or text areas or check boxes, radio buttons, you know, all sorts of elements on the site that users can interact with to enter information. Now, here's the catch. When you're defining these elements in HTML, we're not actually making them functional. So if I define like a text box on my website, just because I define it in HTML doesn't mean that it's going to work. In other words, just because you have the text box there doesn't mean someone's going to be able to type in information and you'll be able to do stuff with that. In order to like get information from a user through these text boxes, you need to use a language called JavaScript. But that's a little bit beyond the scope of this course. We're just trying to learn HTML. So I'm just going to show you guys the actual HTML elements that you can use to define these things like text boxes and text areas. And then if you want, you can go off and learn JavaScript and you can learn how to get input from them. So down here, I'm going to define my first input and all the inputs for the most part are going to use the same tag. So they're going to use this input tag. So I can just say input and I need to pass this a HTML attribute. So I need to give it some information. We can say type and I need to tell it what type of input I want to accept. And there's a long list of different types of inputs that you can accept in HTML, but the most basic one is just text. So this will basically create a text box for us. And you notice that the input is only one tag. It's like a single tag. So we're just ending it over here. There's not like another tag, another ending tag. When I refresh my page, you'll see that we have this text box up here and I can actually just start typing in whatever I want inside of here and it's gonna be a functional text box. Another thing I can do is create a text box for a password. So something that is really common on websites is to have the user enter a password. And what you can do is you can actually hide the text that's getting input into the text box. So instead of saying type text, we can say type password. And you'll see what happens when I come up here, I can type normally in this text box, but when I type down here, it covers these things up. So now they're just like little dots and you can't actually see what's being typed inside of there. So that's kind of like a HTML way of hiding the input from a text box. Another thing we can do is define default content inside of these text boxes. So I could give this a value attribute and now we can just define a default value. So I could say like, enter your username. Maybe this is like a username prompt. And now you'll see that this text is automatically included inside of that text box without me having to do anything. Now I can also define something called a text area. And a text area is a lot like an input, but instead of just having one single line, we can have like a huge block where we can enter text. So this isn't technically an input tag. It has its own type of tag. So it's just called text area. And in here we can make two tags. So we're also going to need a closing tag. And this text area you'll see is going to be like a big thing that we can put our text in. So unlike these two blocks right here, this text area is a little bit bigger and we can actually resize it. So I could take this text area and make it a lot bigger on my page, just like that. And then I can, you know, type in whatever I wanted into here. And that would basically be a place for me to enter in lots of text. You can also define some attributes for a text area. So I can give this a specified number of rows or columns. So I could say here rows is equal to, and now we could say like, maybe we want it to be like 10 rows and we could say columns. So remember rows are going down, columns are going across. We can say, columns and why don't we make this like 30 so it's really obvious and now this text area is going to be really big just like that so it's 30 columns across and 10 rows down and you know you can kind of just like see how that works there and you can also define default text for a text area so inside of these two text area tags i could just type uh you know enter a paragraph and now that text is going to be in there by default. So that's the text area field. And that's pretty fun. There's a couple other uh, input tags that we can look at. So there's different types of input that you can accept. Um, and I'm just going to get rid of this value actually. 
In addition to accepting things like text, we can also accept something like a date. So a lot of times you might have someone like enter their birthday or something. And you can see now the browser is displaying like this little date input for us. And you get this little calendar widget. And this is gonna look different on different browsers. But for the most part, if you use this input type, you can control like what the user is gonna input. So in addition to date, we could also do like email. And email is actually pretty similar to just the text box. We could also do like a range. So this could be like a range of numbers. And you can see we have this little slider here. We could also do a file. So a lot of times on websites, you want users to upload a file and you'll see that this actually opens up my little file browser here. And I can click open and it'll like grab the name of the file. And obviously, you know, without JavaScript or another programming language, you can't actually upload these files. But the point is you can give the actual input prompt for these files. And you can also define different types of buttons. So I can define like um, a checkbox. And here we just have a little box that we could check. You could also define a radio button. Actually, I want to show you guys the difference between checkboxes and radio buttons. So if I have two checkboxes, I can check both of them at the same time. Okay, just like that. If I have two radio buttons, though, And if I give them an attribute called name, so we can name radio button. So I could say button and we'll give this one that same exact name. You can actually only click on one of these radio buttons at a time. So if they have the same name, then I can only click one at a time. So check boxes, you can click as many as you want with radio buttons though. As long as they have the same name, you can only check one at a time. We can also define different buttons. So I can define like a submit button. That's kind of a popular button that people have. So if you have a form, like an HTML form, you can define a submit button. So I can just say submit. And now we'll get this nice little button here for submitting. So there's actually a bunch of these different input types. And I have this web page open over here. This is a web page on W3 schools. And it basically just defines all of the input types for HTML. So the address is w3schools.com forward slash tag s forward slash att underscore input underscore type. And down here, there's this really good list and it just lists out all of the different types of inputs that you can have. So you see like button, checkbox, color, date, file, text, URL, all of these different, you know, types of like text boxes or buttons or little elements that you can use to input information uh, in HTML. So I wanna to talk to you guys about one more HTML element, which is called a form. And a form is basically an element that is gonna be used to store all of these inputs generally. So generally, if you see people using this form element, they're gonna be putting um, these input tags inside of here. So a form is like a wrapper for uh, a bunch of user input. and. You know, as I was saying before, like when you really want to like accept input from a user, um, you're going to need an other, another language besides HTML. And that's usually where forms are going to come in handy because forms can like give information to like your web server or whatever, but you don't really have to worry about that right now. Just know that a form tag is a lot of times acts as a wrapper for these different input tags. So hopefully you guys, you know, got something out of that. You can kind of got a little bit of an introduction into these different input tags, and now you can style your website so users can input information into it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.